it. Okay. So this is our last topic for the unit, successive ionization energies. You're going to get a chance today to um, work on a review assignment, see how you're doing the test is when? Wednesday. Wednesday this week. Okay. I guess I shouldn't be putting that on a YouTube video because it's not going to be relevant after this, will it? Yeah. Okay. Successive ionization energies. We talked about first ionization energy. That's one of the periodic trends. Zach, what is a first ionization energy? I'm going to go look back in my notes because I don't know it two days before a test. That's bad news. Yeah, that's the Curtis, help him out. What is a first ionization energy? Bad Pretty close, but not quite. The energy needed to take away the outermost, the highest energy valence electron of an atom, technically a ground state atom in the gas phase. Yikes, okay? If you didn't know that definition, then you need to study the definitions of periodic trends, right? We had first ionization energy, atomic radius, and electronegativity. If you don't know how to define those three terms, then you need to add that to your list of studying. Um, ionization energies in general, the energy needed to remove electrons, right? First ionization energy, you're removing the outermost, highest energy valence electron from a ground state gas atom. Today we're going to look at other ionization energies. So we're going to look at successive ionization energies. The word successive just means what? What does successive mean? It means one after the next, after the next, after the next, right? It's not a chemistry term, it's an everyday English term. So successive ionization energies, not just the first one, but a second one, a third one, a fourth one, until you run out of electrons for the atom, right? This little table is one way of representing successive ionization energies. This is not a periodic trend, okay, so we're not going to look at patterns across the table. Instead, we're going to look at for something interesting within these numbers. There's a bunch of scary looking numbers here, and the, work, the image the authors of this image shaded in some stuff here that would not be there on a test question, okay? So we're looking at sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon. We're going across period, what, three? Is that right? Have a, if you have a periodic table out, that would be useful, okay? If you need to, put a little definition down for yourself underneath that heading, successive ionization energies, the energies needed to remove successive electrons. So the first, second, third electrons until an atom runs out of electrons. So the energy needed to take away successive electrons, always starting with the highest energy valence electron and then moving closer to the nucleus. Make a little observation for yourself. Do you see a pattern, simple pattern, when you go from the first to the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth? What's happening to the ionization energy for every element? For sodium, it costs 490, let's say 500 kilojoules per mole, that's what these units would be, kilojoules of energy per mole of the element. So it takes about 500 kilojoules for the first electron in sodium. Then look at this, the price jumps up to 4,500 kilojoules of energy to take away the second electron. The third one, about 6,900, 9,500, 13,000, 16,000, 20,000. For magnesium, 700 something, 1,400 something, 7,700 and something, 10,000. What's happening? What's the simple observation? So the successive ionization er energies increase. Okay, that's one observation. What does that mean, practically speaking? It means it's getting harder to take away electrons, right? You pay a certain price to take away the first electron. When you go to try to take away a second electron, it's going to require a higher price, more energy. Why do you think that would be? Why would it take more energy to take away a second electron than the first? 
take away a third than the second. Simple explanation for that? Adam? They're more closer to, uh, to the new states of the atom. That's a very good thought, actually, and that's going to relate to something we talk about later. You said that it's because they get closer to the nucleus. Well, okay. that's something we will talk about in just a few minutes, but suppose you're taking away electrons within the same energy level. So suppose you're in, the, to use the Bohr model language, suppose you're in orbit number two or three, so you're not really getting a lot closer to the nucleus, you're just staying within the same orbit, does that make sense, or same energy level. And then that explanation doesn't quite work, okay? Uh, how about this, the first ionization energy, aren't you basically doing this? You're taking away an electron from a neutral atom, right? The second ionization energy, you're taking away an electron from a positive ion. So now you're making it go from positive to two positive. The third ionization energy, you're trying to take away an electron from a two positive thing to make it three positive. Why is it taking more and more energy to do this? Electrons are negative, and you're trying to take them away from things that are more and more positive. Does that make sense? So as you start off with a neutral element, M, you pay a certain price. When you try to take it away from a positively charged M, it's going to be harder because the positive charged nuclear, or M rather, doesn't want to give up another negatively charged electron. The third one, M, is now even more positive. It's now two positive. So it's going to get harder and harder because the positive charge on the atom is increasing as you go through successive ionization energies. Having said that, what Fatima said is actually very important. Do you see something a little atypical within each row of these numbers? When you look at sodium, yes, the price increases, but does it seem to increase uniformly? Does it increase to the same degree every time? after you paid the first $500, 500 kilojoule price to take away the first electron, to take away the second for sodium, the price jumps up to 4,500, right? That's a nine-fold increase. Magnesium, 700 to 1,400, okay, it doubled. But then to take away a third, 7,700, six or seven times higher, right? Then the fourth, 10,000, 13,000. The shading illustrates where there is a big, big jump in energy, doesn't it? So after one electron for sodium, there's a big jump in energy. In magnesium's case, after two successive ionization energies, there's a big jump. For aluminum, after three, there's a big jump. Why might that be? Why, after three ionization energies for aluminum, do you see a big jump to 11,000? Why, after four for silicon, do you see a big jump? Say again? That's how many electrons are in the outer shell. To use a, a, a proper vocabulary, that's how many valence electrons there are which relates to what Fatima was saying a few minutes ago, right? Sodium has one valence electron in energy level three. When you take it away, your next uh, electron will come from level two, which is closer to the nucleus. So the price and energy goes way up. For magnesium, there's two valence electrons. So for magnesium, the first two ionization energies then there's a big jump when you go to take away the third. Once you've taken away two, there are no more valence electrons, so the next electron comes from an orbit closer to the nucleus that's going to be much harder to take away. Does that make sense? Can you tell me how many valence electrons, just looking at these numbers, how many valence electrons does sulfur have? Can these numbers tell you how many valence electrons an atom has? So for sulfur, what do you notice? 1,000 kilojoules, 2,200 kilojoules, 3,300, 4,500, 7,000, 8,400, then 27,000. 
the big jump occurred after 8500, didn't it? And 8500 was the sixth ionization energy. So how many valence electrons does sulfur have? Six. After you took away six electrons, there were no more valence electrons, then there was a big jump in, in energy. Okay? For chlorine, a halogen, it's going to be seven ionization energies before you see a big jump, therefore it has seven valence electrons. Okay? See if you can apply that to more numbers. I hope you can see this from where you are. Um, take an element like beryllium here. Can you tell from these numbers, first ionization energy, second, third, fourth, how many valence electrons does beryllium have? And do it by looking at these numbers, not by looking at the periodic table. So 900 kilojoules was your first ionization energy. 1800 was your second, so it doubled in price. Then 15,000. So there's a huge jump for beryllium after you took away two electrons. So boron, or sorry, beryllium has two valence electrons. Does that make sense? Can you imagine a question like this on a test where instead of showing you the element symbols, I just put X, element X, Y, Z or something like that and then showed these numbers. And I would ask you, how many valence electrons does this element have? Okay. There's another way to illustrate this, and that's instead of using a table of numbers, you can look at a graph that shows the same information. This is calcium. Okay. So calcium, it's a little tight here, but if you look very closely, those two dots right there represent the first two ionization energies. And if you look really carefully, there is a jump after that. And then you get these guys here. Right? If you count with me, there's two ionization energies here. Then there's eight here. Then there's eight. Actually, did I get that wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's right. And then there's eight here and then there's two here. How do you interpret that? Why do we see two, and then eight, and then eight, and then two? Why is that? These are all ionization energies, successive ionization energies. Think back to grade 11 chemistry. Let's draw the energy level diagram for calcium. How many electrons does it have? Take a look at your periodic table. How many electrons does calcium have? 20. Where are they? Two are in the first energy level. Eight are in the second energy level. Eight are in the third energy level. And two are in the last energy level, or at the fourth. If you look at its electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. So it's got two valence electrons, eight electrons in level three, eight electrons in level two, and two electrons in level one. Do you see those numbers here on the graph? These first two ionization energies are for which of those electrons? Which ones? 1s, 2s, 2p, which ones are those? 1S. Those are your 4s2 electrons, right? Which electrons do you always take away first? The valence electrons. So those two there are the valence electrons. And notice they were the easiest to take away. They had the lowest ionization energies because they're furthest from the nucleus. The next eight are level 3s2 and 3p6. The next eight are 2s2, 2p6. And why is there this huge jump to the last two? Why a huge jump there? Level one is very, very close to the nucleus, right? Compared to level two and level three. Okay? See if you can apply that to here. Here's an unknown element. This could be a test question. 
this graph shows successive ionization energies for an unknown element. Take a look at your take a look at the graph, then look at your periodic table. Tell me the element's symbol and tell me which group it's in on the periodic table. Okay? What's the element symbol and what group is it in on the periodic table? Chelsea, you want to try this? Want to try this? When you look at the graph, how many sections does it appear to have? Three. I agree with you. There's this section here, there's this section here, and there's this section here. You're a little far away, but can you see how many dots are in each section? Away up here at the top, there are two, so that would be the 1s2, right? That would be, in fact, we could probably even write out the electron configuration from this, couldn't we? Or looking at grade 11 chemistry, we could draw the Bohr diagram. This thing has two electrons in the first orbit, the first energy level. Then here, there would be eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this first section has five. So what element are we talking about? Two, eight, and five. Careful. This is, sorry, you said? That is right. This is phosphorus, right? Element phosphorus. How many valence electrons does it have? If this were a multiple choice question, I would say among my choices, A, B, C, D, remember the, there's one right answer, and the other answers are called distractors, right, in a multiple choice question. I would put the following two choices down for sure. Okay? Of those, which one's right? How many valence electrons does this element have? So someone's either going to say it's these two, or they're going to say it's these ones down here. Which ones are the valence electrons? They're the ones furthest from the nucleus, so they should be the easiest ones to take away. So the ionization energies should be the lowest, right? So this guy has five valence electrons, and it's phosphorus, and its group number is group 15 on the periodic table, right? The top of the column, group 15. So it's in the same family as nitrogen. Does this seem pretty straightforward? Either graphically or using a table of numbers like this, you should be able to identify the element, tell me how many valence electrons it has, tell me what family it's in on the periodic table. Okay? All right. That's the last topic in the first year.